Today I'm going to share, and I believe that there'll be another voice that will begin to speak. And I pray your hearts are open to what the voice of God will say to you. We're going to read the Word of God, and that's why I've got you standing. We're going to read it together. There'll be different parts that are underlined. I want you to put emphasis into those. Are you ready to read God's Word? Romans chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Let's read. I encourage you to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, dedicated to God and pleasing to Him. This kind of worship is appropriate for you. Don't become like the people of this world. Instead, change the way you think. Then, You will always be able to determine what God really wants, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. May God bless the reading of His Word. You may be seated. Today I'm going to be talking about tending the garden of your mind. The reality, what I'm sharing is not a quick fix. But I can promise you that if you put this Daily, Say the word daily. Daily. For some of you, it may be hourly, but if you put this into practice, I believe when we get to the end of the year that you will say, wow, I have grown so much in the area of my mind, tending the garden of our mind. Confession from our mouth is important, but understand the confession of your mouth comes from the way you think. We've just read that together. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. This is for us. This is for every Christian. It wouldn't be in the Bible if it wasn't an issue. It is an issue for the Christian as well as the non-Christian. I've told this story before many years ago, but I feel it's worth repeating. There was a man by the name of Nick, and he worked in a railway yard. And he was a very hard worker, but he was known as the most negative, cynical man that worked at that workplace. This one particular day, everybody else left. It was an early afternoon, and he stayed back. And for some reason, he got himself locked in a refrigerated railway car. Now, this railway car was not connected to anything else. In fact, it wasn't working. But Nick was very negative. And he's so much so, he thought, oh, I'm locked. I'm locked in a, a, a car that is, freezes everything. I'm going to freeze to death or I'm going to suffocate. Now, with that, Nick, and this is a true story, by the way, Nick actually was started to shiver. He started to get cold. And he thought, well... I better write something down. So he got a pen out of his pocket and found a piece of cardboard in the side corner of the car. And he wrote these words, getting so cold, body numb. If I don't get out soon, these will probably be my last words. They actually were his last words. The workmen come in and found him the next day, crumbled up in the corner, frozen to death. They The autopsy they did revealed he actually did freeze to death. But what's interesting about this, as I said earlier, the car, railway car, was not working. It has not connected to anything, had not worked for a long time. He, that night, the temperature in that car was 15 degrees Celsius. He froze to death because he believed that he didn't have a chance. He expected the worst. He saw himself as doomed and there was no way out. He lost his battle in his mind. So what do you allow your mind to dwell on? Are you focusing on your problems, filled with negative thoughts, or do you think to yourself, do you believe, I will get through this? This is tough at the moment, but I am getting through this. How do you view your life? Are you like Nick? Everything's bleak and dreary. Everything's quarter quarter full. It's not even half full, it's quarter full. Or do you see your life as full of potential? 
you know, we can get so caught up. And I believe it's a distraction of the enemy. So caught up of what's not happening in our life that we lose focus on the good things. And we get locked in a railway car that we do not escape out of. And we are frozen still, not Not in a physical sense, but we're frozen and have no way of moving forward. So are you tending the garden of your mind? Do you notice it doesn't take much for weeds to grow? Have you noticed that? Here's a picture of a garden with a lot of weeds. Maybe this garden looks like your front yard backyard but it takes a lot of hard work and diligence to have a beautiful garden can we see that one wow who would like that we've got that haven't we pastor jason we've got fake grass it's wonderful (laughs) Wonderful. Uh, John and Jason rib each other all the time about their grass. But to get a grass, get a lawn like that, to get a garden like that, you have to be very, very intentional. Weeds grow naturally. You don't have to do anything to get a weed. But if we begin to think of our mind like a garden... And we need to daily tend the garden of our mind or we'll end up with weeds. We need to develop a habit of looking at each thought as it were a plant. Is this a weed or is this good seed? A weed or good seed? What what should you do with a weed? Pull it out. And yet we entertain the weeds. We entertain those negative thoughts that come into our mind. So either uh, cultivate it, pull it out, and replace it. You replace it with good seed. What's the good seed? The Word of God. We can live our life expecting the worst, expecting defeat, a failure, mediocrity. A wise person once said many years ago, watch your thoughts they become your words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Where, do you all st- where does it all start? Proverbs 23 verse 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He. The truth is, you are what you think. You can end up with a small, ineffective, confined life just purely by the way you think. If you're going through a challenge right now, don't be like Nick in the railway car. You know, he could have just done some star jumps and, and running and he would have been fine the next morning when the workmen come. 15 degrees, that's our normal night here in Melbourne, less last night, he would never have frozen to death, but he had already lost the fight in his mind. So what are you expecting? How are you tending the garden of your mind? You know, live on this earth for long enough, you'll take some hits. You'll take hits with your finances or with your health or or in relationships. Maybe... In your life right now, you're thinking, I didn't expect that my life would be like this. I thought I would be further along. I thought I would have more. Whatever it is, you thought life would be different. And these things can knock us around for a time. But can I encourage you, don't get locked in your car, railway car. Don't stay there. God has much more for you. We need to change the noises that we allow to play in our head. That seed comes, that thought comes, don't let it stay there. Fill your mind with the promises of God. What the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. Psalm 31 verse 19, God, you have stored up so many good things for us. 
like a treasure chest, heaped up and spilling over with blessing, all for those who honour and worship you. God has a treasure chest of goodness, of blessing, right, ready for you. Will you receive it? Will you open the treasure chest? Will you claim the promises as yours? They're there, but you have to take them and receive them. Do you receive the promises of God? Do you even believe? I'm sure that there's people in this room who say, yeah, it's all right for you. You don't know what I've been going through. You're a pastor. Of course you've got promises. Can I say God has no favorites? No favorites. If you saw my obscure life where I came from, you'd understand. Wow, this is God. He's got the, I've, just, I've just opened the treasure chest that he has for me with my name on it. Lois Savage, it used to be called. It's now Lois Spinella. John thinks he saved me. Uh, <laughs> that savage by name, savage by nature. Uh, I opened the treasure chest for all these treasures that are mine. And he's got one with your name on it for you to receive the goodness, the abundance, the blessing, the favor, the generosity of God over and over and over. How are you tending the garden of your mind? The reality is it's a slow process. We want it instant. Well, I want it now. After today, I'm going to be better. No, you won't. You'll be a little bit better, but if you make a decision, you've got to keep pulling out the weed and replacing it with the Word of God and His promises. Don't let the devil use your mind as a dumping ground. Some of you are way too good at that, and you take every thought that comes your way. Instead, the Bible says in Romans 12 too, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Allow God to renew, to change, to reprogram. Reprogram the way you think. We need to take responsibility for our own actions. Things may have happened to you. Maybe it's the way your family has been. But you take responsibility. Today, I am taking responsibility for what I allow in my mind. And then from your mind, you'll be able to process other things around you. 2 Corinthians, the Bible says, we take every thought captive so that it is obedient to Christ. So what's some of the things that the devil throws at you? You're ugly. Take it captive. No. What is the word of God? What's God promised? What is God's promise to me? I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. Get rid of it. Pull it out. What's another thought that could come? You're a failure. You were told that by your parents. What is a promise of God? Pull that out. It's opposite to what God's promise is. You can't do that. John was told forever that he couldn't do things. The fact that he is standing at a platform is a testament to the goodness of God because there is nothing in his family that would have said that it was possible. So have you been told you're a failure? Is that, a, is that good? So what do you do with it? You pull it out. I want you to practice that. What's a thought? that comes into your mind constantly. Okay? You got it? So is it good or is it bad? Pull it out. Okay? Get a practice. Pull it out. Some of you just let it filter around. I'll just meditate on it. I'll think about it. Is it a promise of God? And if it's not, pull it out and replace it with the Word of God. You need to realize the devil wants to limit your life. He wants to contain you. He wants you to live a small, mediocre, mediocrity life. Don't get too serious about your faith. Don't come to the 9.30 prayer meeting. Whatever you do, don't come to the... And don't lift your hands and worship. You can come to church. You can nod. Go, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but don't get too serious. You see, he always wants to hold you. He wants to, to contain you and... So what do you do? Say, ah, ha, ha. no, I'm made for more than that. Pull it out. I'm going to be here at 9.30. I'm going to have my hands lifted the highest in this place because I'm going to do everything opposite that the enemy wants to do. I am not going to let him contain me. I'm going to tend the garden of my mind. He wants you to think that your life is small, that it's meant to be endured, not enjoyed. He doesn't want you to understand that there is a battle that you fight 
and it's largely waged in our mind. He doesn't want you to use the word of God as your weapon. He just wants you to, it's the way it is for you. He doesn't want you to have victory in your situation. But can I say, God is for you. He is not against you. He is on your side. And he will give you the victory. He will take you through. Romans 10.10, it says, For it is believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. It's engaging your heart and your mouth that comes out of the way you think. So how do... You tend the garden of your mind. Understand what you speak and what you think are partners. What you speak and what you think are partners. Number two, increase your faith. We see in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 and 30, there's a story of two blind men. And I love this story. We're just going to pull it apart a little bit. And and after Jesus left the girl's house, two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe you can see? What was their response? Yes, Lord, come on, you've got to help me. Yes, Lord. And they told him, We do. Then he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. And suddenly they could see. These two blind men followed Jesus. And Jesus asked them, do you believe that I can make you see? Jesus was challenging their thoughts. He was challenging their faith. And did they really, really believe deep down that he could heal them? Now, Jesus knew he could heal them. He could have just blinked. He could have wiggled his nose. He could have done anything. But he was wanting them to actually understand that this was their miracle waiting for them to receive it. There's something happened in these two men in their change of confession. Previously, they had been beggars. Money for the blind, money for the blind. That's how they made their living. That was their confession. But all of a sudden, something had changed. Jesus, we believe you can heal me and that I can see again. Several weeks ago, I was playing the piano over in one of the rooms and I began to play this song that you learned this morning. <laughs> Only believe. Only believe all things are possible. Only believe. As I was playing that, I'm just was praying over different congregational members, realizing that they needed a miracle. Because in the natural, there's no hope. But believing in an all powerful God, something begins to shift. I'm going to teach a little bit more into this, and then I'm going to ask anyone who needs a miracle, anyone who needs a breakthrough in their life to stand. And I want you to be on your feet straight away. I'm not going to call, extend it. It's like I'm ready to receive. I'm, I'm leaning in. I, I, my faith has already, as, as Nat was leading, that my faith has beginning, already began to be ignited. I'm already believing for a miracle. I'm already believing what has been uh, impossible with God things turn around and become possible. Let there be an expectation in your heart that across this room there will be breakthrough. If you're at home, that you stand also to your feet and that you receive your miracle because God is no distance, nothing's to Him. He's there with you. The blind man's faith and their confession turned around their circumstances. Your faith, your confession can turn around your circumstances. I love the same passage in the message. It says in Matthew 9, it says, And Jesus said to them, Do you really believe I can do this? They said, Why, yes, Master. He touched their eyes and said, Become what you believe. I reckon I could sit down after that. Become what you believe. So what do you believe about your life? 
your circumstances, your finances, your health? What are you speaking over your life? Is it full of pain and misery? I'm going to struggle financially for the rest of my life. I'll always have conflict in relationships. This unhappiness will plague me forever. I'll always suffer in my mind. I'll always be a warrior. My mum was a warrior. Her mum was a warrior. We worry about everything. It's just the way I am. What we speak can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. We become what we believe. We look at these two blind men. They believe that Jesus was the Son of God and that He could heal them. And because of their faith, they changed their thinking, which changed the way they spoke, and they received their miracle and their breakthrough. So are you believing to rise above your circumstances, your challenges, your difficulties, your mountains that have tried to defeat you? Well, I want to encourage you this morning. These two blind men were physically blind, but they placed their faith in an all-powerful God. And they spoke words of faith and they received their miracle. But notice this passage of Scripture. Their words changed even before their circumstances changed. Think of that. Their words changed first. Then they got their miracle. They were still blind when Jesus said, Do you really believe I can make you see? They said, Why, yes, Master. What are you believing for? Have you got a small mentality, just surviving, just getting through, just managing today? This is the way it will always be. Or do you see yourself as a conqueror, well able to succeed? You are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. God is on my side and I am preparing for a breakthrough. I don't have it yet, but I am getting ready for that. I am a victor, not a victim. It is up to you according to your faith and the confession of your mouth. Romans 12, 2 says, Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants. The reality is, if you don't think your situation can ever change, probably it won't. What a man thinks So he truly is. Proverbs 23, 7. When you think you're destined to fail, you'll fail. When you think thoughts of mediocrity, you will live an average life. When you think your body can't be healed, there's every chance it never will. Now, can I just put a couple of clarifying statements here? Please don't say if you've got a head cold and you've got a runny nose and and you're coughing and I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. You are sick and everybody knows you're sick. You're just being silly, okay? Say, I am believing in the power of Jesus and I am believing for my breakthrough of healing in my body. You understand? Keep your thoughts on the healer and your confession words, one of restored health. And I heard this story again, a true story of Dottie Osteen. She was 41 years of age and she was given a death sentence by her doctor. Weeks to live with liver cancer. She went home very unwell, wasn't able to walk around, but she decided she was going to claim the promises of God for herself. So 30, 40 scriptures she began to, to memorize and just... Uh, speak over her situation. Only believe, only believe all things are possible. God, I, I believe. Weeks passed, the cutoff date of when she should have died. Still going. More weeks passed. She started to have a little bit of an appetite. Warm months passed. Her health restored day by day, week by week. It is now 48 years. 
She is 80, no, how many? 48 years later. She is now 89 years of age. She is declaring the promises of God. She could have lain on her deathbed, had all her family around, telling her the lovely things that she's done in her life. But she was standing on the promises of God. She was declaring God's word over her life. Now, again, I'm going to give another clarifying statement. Please, we've got to be mature as Christians. If someone's died, it doesn't mean they've done wrong. If people are going through a tough time, it doesn't mean they're out of the will of God. Okay, come on. We've got to be really wise, really, really wise. Use the scripture wisely. Our life is in the hands of God. I believe that while I have breath, we've all got breath here, with a weak praise the Lord. We believe for God of the impossible and leave the timing of our life here on earth to the divine one. You understand that? But hear this woman. Why was she? Why did she get her miracles? You know, you and I all know people. It's like they died way too young. They were good people. They were God-fearing people. Why didn't they get that? I don't know. I really don't know. But I do know he is a good, good father. And he wants to give good gifts. And even in your pain, even in your trial, only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Proverbs 6.2 says, You are trapped by the words of your own mouth. Whoa. Watch what you allow in your mind because your heart, your mouth will speak. Romans 10.10, For it is your heart that you believe. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Our negative confession, our negative thinking stops the power of God working. He wants us to pray for a renewed mind day by day, getting stronger and stronger. If you need a miracle, if you need a breakthrough, I want you to stand right where you are, right now. Don't hold back. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to declare. I want you to declare the promise of God over your life right now. I can pray. But I want you to do it because He hears your prayers just as much as He hears my prayers. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, right across this room, Lord. Oh, we know you're here. Oh, things that are impossible for man are possible for you. Oh, Lord, whatever it is, whether it's it's mental health, physical health, whether it's finances, relationships. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, we pray. We come to you and say, thank you, God. I receive. I receive your health. I receive your miracle. I receive your, your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Some of you have had roadblocks and you think, I can't find the way forward. It's just like I'm coming at every door I go to to try and open this. It's just a closed space in front of me. God's going to begin to open. He's going to give you creative ideas. He's going to give you the people to put into play that are going to actually help you and them to work together in Jesus' name. For some of you, you've had bad news after bad news after bad news, and you're just anticipating more bad news. Can I just say, God wants to break that over your life. He wants you to understand that He has good things in store for you, and that you create this eager expectation of good things down the track. Right now, right now, begin to break it. Begin to break mindsets in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, for health. Lord, for those that are, need a supernatural physical healing. In Jesus' name. Right now, we receive your healing. We receive your health. I believe. I believe. I believe nothing is impossible for you. I receive it in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, begin to touch. Jesus, begin to walk around this room and touch people's lives. In your mighty name, in your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, katarava shataradaba sanda. Oriyataradaba shataradaba sianda. Oh, hallelujah. At home, 
Receive your miracle. Lean in. Lean in. Don't, don't be apathetic. Lean in. I am desperate for you. Those blind men were desperate. Dottie Osteen was desperate for her miracle. She didn't just be was passive, laying on her bed. She was calling upon the name of the Lord. I pray that in Jesus' name. Oh, let faith arise. Oh, maybe we stir ourselves up. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I am the head and not the tail. I am the victor, not the victim. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, God. You are for me. You are not against me. In your mighty name. In your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may take your seats. I believe there's going to be stories of miracles and breakthroughs. And you need to tell us because we want to encourage. It encourages us, but it encourages other people. We won't use your name, but we want to encourage. I believe this is we are living in supernatural days and we should be anticipating and expecting our supernatural God to step in. Amen? We are Pentecostal. We daily tend the garden of our mind. Cultivate it if it's good. Let it sit there. Say, thank you, God. I meditate on your word. What do you do if it's negative, if it is not according to God's word? What do you do? Pull it out. Don't let it rest. Don't let it take root. It's that Pascalin plant, wheat. Apparently, it goes really deep. Our poor neighbor, he spent a lot of money on doing his garden, and his lawn, and he's got big holes now where he's been digging the pascalin out. And I walked past it again this morning and I thought, you poor man, you've got no lawn left. It's all weeds. Yeah, there's got a bit of grass here and there, but it's so full of weeds. Get it out quickly. Don't let it take root and dig down because you will believe the lies of the devil. So lastly, how do we tend the garden of our mind? Full surrender to God is the only option. To change the way you think can only be done when we fully surrender ourselves to Jesus. You can try and connect to God your own way. You can try and fill the void in your life with employment and things and relationships. Some of those are not bad. But when they replace Jesus as the first place, you will never experience the full joy of God. In Romans 12, 1 in the message, it says, take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Paul says, present our bodies fully alive. We've already established we're all alive here today. So he's saying, present yourselves to him. He's not looking for you to have it all together. No, what a what a terrible lie the enemy has given us that we've got to have it all together. And when we mess up that we've got to withdraw. But if people knew what I was really like, they wouldn't like me. They wouldn't talk to me. They wouldn't uh, allow me to do the things in church that I'm allowed to do. God knows everything. And he says, "Come." A beautiful song Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. And that's what he does. He keeps calling. He never, ever rejects us. He's just saying, come to me. Give me everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. With all the stuff still needing to be worked through, a life dying to self, a life that seeks to live fully for Jesus, living according to his plans. It's taking your everyday, ordinary life, not just the spiritual component. He wants to be included in every aspect, everything, presenting our past, our present, and our future to him. You know, we can have good intentions. I'm not going to ask you to put up your hand who, who had a New Year's resolution and whether you're still on the path. The reality is I don't do them because they don't usually work. 
I just live every day, every day, every day. And because I'm working on this mind, and I've been working on my mind all my Christian life, and I realize how wicked it is. So I can't even afford to have a little seed drop there. I've got to deal with it really quick because I know how bad I can get. I know my heart is desperately wicked. And that's all of us. That's all of us understanding God's plan. He wants us to come in our brokenness, in our mess. He knows we'll mess up. He knows we'll get discouraged. But he says, come back to me. Present your life to me. In closing, I've talked about tending the garden of our mind, that we need to give attention to our thoughts, which become words, which becomes our life. Nothing that lands in our mind, we actually have control of that. We can actually deal with it. We need to be better at distinguishing. Is this from God? Stays. If it's not, pull it out. Is this a a, a good thought? Is this going to help me grow? Leave it there. Let it nourish. Water it. Have the Word of God wash over you. If it's not, pull it out. Pull out the weeds. So what has the Holy Spirit been whispering to you today? Speaking into your heart. Is there some reprogramming that needs to be done? Maybe all your life you've thought a certain way. Today, you can begin the reprogramming process. Have you been believing the lies of the devil and saying that this is as good as it gets? This morning, maybe you're here and you've never invited Jesus into your life. I've talked about him as one who is a friend, one who is accepting of every part of my life and if you've never experienced full acceptance there's always been conditions to people accepting you but today Jesus accepts every part of you see Jesus died on the cross while we're sinners while we were in our bad mess he knew when he died that you and I were going to be here today and he says I love them so much I'm going to die on the cross But he didn't stay on the cross. He was buried. And after three days, he rose again. And he rose again so you could stand in right relationship with him. And we're going to pray a prayer across this room. I'm going to ask everyone to pray. If you have Jesus in your heart, I want you to begin to already pray that there's a stirring. I know there's people in valleys of decision. Maybe you've been in church all your life. Maybe your spouse made you come. Maybe your parents made you come. Maybe you're curious. Maybe stuff in life got disappointed. God, I thought it was going to be better than this. I thought you were going to be, life was going to be easier and it's not been easier. And today is your turn to, time to return to your first love of Jesus. And we're going to pray a prayer together. And it'll be a prayer that says, Jesus, thank you that you receive me, that you accept me, that you love me in my mess. And today I ask for your forgiveness of my sin, because we're all sinners, and that you will receive me in your family. We're going to say amen. And that, when you say that prayer, something supernatural happens. You may not feel any different, but you have the Spirit of God living inside of you so you are different you are different so you ready to pray right across this room close your eyes bow your head no moving let's pray this prayer together dear Jesus I thank you that you take things that are broken and make them whole again Today, I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sin and accept me into your family. I need your help today. I need your help every day to live a life that is pleasing to you. 
Jesus, I receive your love. In your mighty name, amen. amen. Keep your head bowed, eyes closed. If you pray that prayer for the first time or you're making a rededication, just so I know who I'm going to pray for, I'm not going to ask you to come out the front. I just want to know who I'm actually praying for. I want you to lift your hands right across this room. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't want to miss. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you know every decision that's been made today. Lord, I pray right now. Jesus, you live inside of them. They are empowered by you. What they cannot do by wishful thinking and, and, and good thinking, Lord, is transformed as they renew their mind according to your word. In Jesus' name. Lord, thank you that you receive them. They are part of your family. Their lives forever changed. In your mighty name. Amen.